Hello everyone! The video you're about to watch, or rather the audio you're about to listen to for the most part, comes all the way back from JordanCon 2018 when Isaac Stewart, art director at Dragonsteel Entertainment and creator of beautiful maps and beautiful glyphs, held a workshop on the creation of the Stormlight Archive glyphs. So what you're seeing here is a mostly audio recording of that workshop with a few video clips here and there just to give you an idea of what's going on. Um, the videos are not that important, they're not long, but we do have timestamps for them in the description if you want to check those out as you are listening. That's all. Enjoy. Trying to read the glyphs. They're trying to go in there and deconstruct the sounds that are in the glyphs. And that the Alethi wouldn't do that, except for maybe the calligraphers. Um, because if, if you see here, when they first start out, a calligrapher made this using the sounds. And then over time, they change. They morph into into a symbol that it is recognized and they say oh that's the symbol for storm so if you see a glyph in the books and you try to use this key to decode it you're probably also if you are able to decode it it's not going to be an english word it's going to be something like um you know ketcha or zeras things like that we, you have the latest version of this, by the way. We had accidentally called Eternal Kalad, and it was actually Kalak, so there you go. We just sent that to Tor. Um, the, the other reason is that when calligraphers make these glyphs, the ultimate rule that they follow is, does it look cool? Does it, does it look like the way that they want it to look? That's the ultimate rule that I do. So, so I err on the side of awesome. Err on the side of awesome. You'll see <laughs> in the rules, the, or just the kind of the process that I have here, the last um, number five down at the bottom says, cool trumps readability. Um, because they just want it to look cool. So they'll distend these shapes, they'll rotate the shapes, they'll flip the shapes to fit it into to what they are envisioning this to be. And, and, and honestly, probably nowadays, the uh, Alethi calligraphers are mostly hired out by people who want personal glyphs. There's not a whole lot of new glyphs coming into the, to the lexicon unless they, um, like on Naz's sheet here, they, they talk about uh, the bat-like cephalopod that the Alethi hadn't encountered until their recent conquest in ACAC. So that, that is one that would be easier to decode because it's a newer glyph. So the, the Calligraphers Guild, they're just, you know, if somebody developed a computer and they're like, oh, this is called DOS Computer, then they make a, a new glyph for it. Um, so I'm going to walk you through kind of what I do. Let's look at the, the creation steps. First, I do a freeform artiste sketches. <laughs> What that is, for example, um, somebody emailed me and said, hey, what is the glyph for family? And since I had this, this uh, thing coming up, I, I, I made, it, made it for them. And what I did was I, I, I took this program called Silk, which my kids like to draw. In fact, most of these glyph-looking things you have on the colorful thing are things that my kids drew, drew in church. <laughs> or when we were somewhere and they were bored, like a piano recital. <laughs> Here, take my phone, and then, then they sit and they draw these, these, these things, and they, they just enjoy doing that. But what, what it does for me is I'm always looking for cool shapes in nature. I, mean, I make maps this way, too. If I see something on the sidewalk from concrete, you know, that got left there and it's built up and it looks like a map, I take pictures of that. I take pictures of guacamole lids when they come off. I just take pictures of cool shapes everywhere, just, just looking for inspiration. And this is one of these things that kind of focuses my inspiration a little bit. Um, this is called Silk. It's free. It's just, I, I don't know if it's on Android devices, but it's, it's in the Apple App Store. And, and there's all sorts of different symmetries that you can pick. Uh, and and I'll, I'll use different ones. I always make sure that it's symmetrical across the the mm -hmm. middle axis. 
but uh, you know, th this is cool. So I just did one that was just a normal symmetry, and now I'm doing one that kind of does a this sort of symmetry. And then I, 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 if I find a shape that I like, I'll save it. My kids will just save all sorts of these things. I had to go in and fix some of them because they were just, you know, they just sit there and do this sort of a thing. And it's like, I can't make a glyph out of that. <laughs> what is that glyph for? It's a glyph for this is messed up. <laughs> so what I, what I did for the glyph for family is I, I took this program and I made an artiste sketch. So I'm just feeling this. What, is, what does family feel like? <laughs> this sounds like so fine arts department, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which I did not, I, I came through an like illustration type background in, in animation, so they didn't, it was never how do you feel. But this this mm. is kind of cool, right? So I, I did this. It's like, well, there, there are these sort of protective tendrils protecting you know, a, an inner core. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I, I, I came up with that. Um, and then when I come up with the glyph, I go to Arabic and I go to um, I go to Arabic and Hebrew, and I try to I try to go to more ancient roots of those if I can if I can find it I'll find um, older versions of the Quran or the these co Bible concordances and I'll see what the, how they were using words, but then I mash them together and then I send them to Peter. And I say, Peter, does this sound like something that the Alethi would use? And then he'll say, they don't use Q. Change it to a K. <laughs> Things like that. So for, for family, I mash together a couple of words. Aile, I'm probably saying it wrong, but, um, which means family in Arabic, and Ba'ith, which means family in Hebrew, some down, somewhere down the line. I'm just looking for sounds, not necessarily meanings. And I, I, I put that together and came up with Abara, which I know here at Jordan Khan sounds like Paran Abara, right? But that's kind of cool because, you know, who's a family man, right? So, <laughs> so I, took, I took this and then I took the shapes. The A and the Alethi glyphs are always either circles or nice little dots. And they'll use it as many times as they need to. I mean, Abara has three A's in it, three A sounds. You don't have to do three A sounds in the glyph. It's just put that dash in there somewhere, uh, repeat it. Um, you'll, you'll notice in Words of Radiance, at the very back, uh, Yasna, I think, created this big, no, it was Navani, created this big storm type glyph, um, which is a different, it's, it, it, that, that's more um, art, artistic glyph making which is pro one of the things the Calligraphers Guild would probably do. They'd probably take something like a white spine shape and write a poem that looks like a white spine using the glyphs. Um, those are a little more readable than just the standard glyphs that people are supposed to recognize. But I, I the A is a, a dash or a little circle type thing. It, it looks more like a kind of a square because we're using calligraphy. They would probably use whatever their equivalent of a bamboo shoot is and whittle it down until they got an edge and dip it in ink and probably use that. And then they would turn it around to draw the other side. I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. Hopefully this is helpful information. But then the, you'll notice on the, the B, the B is a line or a curved line, um, which is really helpful when there's a B in the letter because you can just do these lines that look cool. And, um, and then the R is sort of this looks like a really uncomfortable chair <laughs> down here. Um, I didn't use that one on this one. I, I, I went, you'll notice there's these more of these calligraphic things. So I took this, I'm just using it as inspiration, and I drew this. So, um, so that's kind of how I do it. So you'll see here we have, here's the Bs, here's the As. I bet though, oh, I did this quickly over time, this would become, this would change. So the, this is probably more like the protoglyph for family. And the one they're using now, in probably, let, let's just kind of show you what I do. That's part of the, the thing here where it says, write the glyph a few, few dozen times. I'll take that and then I'll just start writing it. What, if I was writing this all the time, what are the shortcuts that I would start doing over time? And I'll do that and it will eventually become, Kind of like 
what we did here on this sheet where if you look at storm, it just gets a little more simple to, for them to draw, probably because they got tired of drawing these little ear-like things on the sides and somebody just started drawing it like this. But the shape is, is, is almost there. I did this with bridge four. Um, if you look on this one right here, bridge four can be that or that depending on how but, but it, it always looks like an X over a little arrow. Um, so with family, it would uh, probably over time, people would get tired of doing all those little dots inside of it and probably reduce it to just one dot. That it, it would probably wind up looking where they just repeat this sort of a thing after time. And then just do one, one dot in the center. This is really cool. Whoops. I wish this would actually have symmetry for you, but it doesn't. That is just, there we go. There's kind of a, a certain size. They're a little bit taller than they are wide, usually, unless, it, just for your standard glyph. So family would probably, I, you can see it's just fast, but family would eventually look, go from looking like this to something a little more, more simplified over time. Um, so another one that I did in preparation for the class was I, I wanted to know what the word for a physician is because Kaladin is a physician, right? That's a pretty important thing in their world. And so I took the I took the words for doctor in Arabic, Tabib, Hebrew, Rafa, and came up with Tafar. Approved it through Peter. Um, and we with the Alephi words, we sometimes the glyphs are like if they're really core glyphs, they're going to be palindromes. Brandon writes a lot of these, like Kok or Linil or Kak. Um, some of the more abstract concepts, I, I start throwing in, I make it so that it looks like a palindrome, then I'll start changing the vowels and maybe one of the letters. So it's just slightly off, kind of like some of the names are in Alethi. Um, so Tafar. So I, what I did is, this is one, the reason I show you this one, Tafar, the physician, doctor, right? Haha. Uh, -ha. <laughs> but th this, this is probably not an official glyph. <laughs> but I want to show you this because it illustrates how much I was able to distend the alphabet glyphs to fit what I wanted to draw. So this is what you, you could do with your name. You could take a couple of things that you like about yourself, that you like to read. Maybe you can take uh, the words and write it into a glyph, like a book. Or you find something else that, you know, I want my name to look like an eagle. You can kind of do that sort of a thing. So um, if you look at this letter right here, right, that is, that's the F for Tafar, right here. But it's like at a weird angle, because the, the glyph for F, or the, the phoneme for F, looks like this. Oh, it's coming up there. So, but what I did was, I, I sort of <laughs> rotated it, I don't know. Anyway, you can kind of see what I did with it right there, right? With this one, it was, here's, I really distended that one line right here. But I still had sort of the same shape going on. So when you're making, we're gonna practice by making your own name. Um, we'll just make a, a quick glyph here so that We'll just do a representation of my wife, Kara, just came in. Maybe I'll, I'll write her name. 
So look at your, your sheet here. Her, her name is K. Wow, this is not working. Her name is Kara, like that. Um, so the the this is without the crutch of that the, the cool little shapes there. We're just gonna I'm gonna do that really quickly. Um, two different ways to do this. So I could do you know there, there's one way you can do Kara or a K, um, and then. You could maybe do a, a dot. Here's the R. And I'm, I'm constantly flipping things around in Photoshop. It's a little bit harder for me to do this on, on here and trying to distend things how, how I want it to look. But then, but then what I might do is to make it look a little more abstract or a little cooler, I might add some, some more of those shapes in there. That, that dot up there at the top would be, and I, I honestly will take that and um, when I'm creating these glyphs, I'll, dang, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, this, I'll show you why I'm doing that. I'll go back over the top of it, like this. And actually try to actually separate some of those lines out, if that makes any sense. So then, Obviously, I do a little more refinement, and I, I just keep refining these until until I like it. And then when I like it, I'll take it into a program like Illustrator, and really get the vector nice because we're probably going to, if we make a glyph that we like, we're probably going to put it on things or use it several different places. Um, so the second way that we could do this is by nope, not by duplicating that. So I'm going to grab a this from, uh, I thought this one, you guys all have this one on there. I thought this one looked really cool. So using those same shapes for, for Kara, I could try to fit it in into this. Thanks for your patience. Well, this is normally something I just sit and do at my computer, right? I don't have people looking over my shoulder, so there's a little bit of, uh, I'm sweating a lot up here. Feel free to ask questions. Um, the, the R is kind of the, the funniest letter to fit into this. So, I, I'm, when, when you get a chance to do this, if you want, just constantly flip your paper around and look at it. Sometimes I'll draw a glyph and I'm like, oh, I like that better upside down. And then it'll just, it'll, it'll, it'll be this, that way. But it makes it easier to try to fit these shapes into things. But here, here's the R, right? Um, you can distend that quite a bit. And I'm thinking I could maybe even fit it in over on these sides. But, uh, so maybe right here there's a you can see why I eventually created another alphabet that they also use because that right there looks really pretty well I mean it also makes sense considering think about how many 
font we have yeah. for calligraphy versus yeah. informal writing. So it totally makes sense for this world that loves world word play so much would love it even more in the writing. You know, I can see the Alessi women having calligraphy contest. <laughs> So do you ever find that you have to step away from one that you've been working on and like give it a group brain a break? Because often you hear with writers that they're like, I just can't look at this anymore yeah. right now. Do you find that you have to do that with these? Yep, I do that. I do that all the time. Trying to, what's that? I was wondering if Bliss had the equivalent of wing dings. Wing dings? <laughs> they, they are, they're basically wing dings they, they by themselves. <laughs> Well, instead of having you sit and, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here, right? I could, I could take, let's see, uh, boy, that Y is a weird shape. But uh, if there was a B in the letter, I could do that and add an, an A in the middle. Um, so even though the B looks like a, almost a flat line in this alphabet, you can rotate it? You can curve it, rotate it. Um, yeah, you can do just about, I mean, this could be a B right there. This also could be a B. <laughs> it, it's just, it's, it's all about making it look cool. So I'll, I'll sit at my computer and I'll just try to fit things into this till it looks right. I want to, I want to use this one for, um, if we have time, I'm going to just, while well, you guys are working on things, I'm going to work on one for the Cobalt Guard. Um, and I think this looks kind of guard-like. So I think cobalt would be a much uh, more complex glyph. On the, on the paper here, you see justice, thath. Justice is kind of a new, it's a pretty complex concept. And so it's a much more complex glyph. From the first book, we know that Navani spends quite a bit of time creating that out on the stone and then lighting it to, to get Sadius's um, attention. And um, I was just, for a long time, I'm like, Brandon, you named this Thath, and you said it was a very complex glyph. How, how is that? You know, because I can I can write Thath like, uh, you know, a. <laughs> <laughs> right? Navani spends all afternoon to do this. I'm like, I can I can get a uh, Sadius's attention in two seconds. <laughs> so, but you know that that's not as cool looking. And so, so I, you know, I came up with, if it's a more complex concept, they'll, they'll spend more time creating the, the, the glyph that way. Um, Are any of the letters sacred, the shapes? No. Just make them look uh, symmetrical. So what you have now, I, I have this, these eight glyphs that my children drew, some of them. Uh, the first three I actually made for the class, the rest of them my kids did. Pick one that you like. Um, I, I gave you all a, a piece of uh, tracing paper. Um, you have the, the markers. You're welcome to do that. I would actually, the first thing I would do is thumbnail this out if you have a pencil. I have, yeah. We, I would okay. just go up in the corner and, and maybe write, write down all the, the sounds in your name from the thing so that you have it up at the top. If you want, twist some of them around. I, I'll have, often up in the corner, I'll have this whole thing of, I've done it in Photoshop, but I'll, I'll draw the letters, the, the phonemes down, and then I'll sit and twist them in different ways so that I have it up in the corner that I can reference to. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, not all of these are sharp enough. I have a sharpener. This is just, if, if you want to. Pencil? You can sit and just draw, you know, you. The, the little the shapes up at the top. And uh, if, if you want, I can walk can around and around? if you have questions. And then just, then, then just do what I did where you pick, pick one of these. Yeah. Just pick one of these, take your, your tracing paper, and then just, uh, just try it over the top. There's probably more tracing paper too if you need it. But just try putting your, once you feel you've got a shape that you like, Okay. Try filling it in and see what you come up with. And uh, I can give some pointers. Uh, this is supposed to be a workshop, right? Not me just sitting up here talking. And you don't want to talk the whole time. You're like, please get me out of this. No, it, it's all good. It's just that oh, I'm not sure how interesting. 
No you way. guys are all here. Thank you for being here. Yeah. <laughs> Interested you should probably and probably writing know glyphs. Like putting how to create stormlight glyphs is gonna draw a lot of people. <laughs> so, while you are doing that, feel free to ask me questions. Um, I'm gonna start working on cobalt guard. So they would probably say this gall guard cobalt in Alethi which is backward from how they would modify the numbers. The numbers, they always put the number first, um, like four bridge, bridge four. Um, other things, cobalt guard would be guard cobalt. Wind stance would be stance wind. Um, so they, they, they put the qualifiers after? Usually. Usually. Numbers, it's the opposite, though. <coughs> because you've got the noun second on that one. Four bridge. Yep. I, I, for way of kings, I would put them in order. So some of the glyphs from the way of kings are more in order. Um, yeah. I used to. I used to have a thing where I would. I would actually. This is where you start. And it always started with this line down the middle, and we called that the, the shard line. And then I would, so I have this paper somewhere that we just never use anymore that was how I made glyphs for way, the Way of Kings. And it just, the, the process morphed as the needs of the, the books and the, and I came up with a, a process that seemed like it worked closer to what Brandon was originally envisioning for the glyphs. Here's a question. Yeah. How would rocks Name. <laughs> I honestly, I honestly think that they, if he went to a calligrapher and said, I want my name, or, or if he said he just went to Khaled and he's like, I don't know how to write my name, he would, he would just be like, well, here's the glyph for rock. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask, because my name is Joy, which uh -huh. is already a concept. Uh huh. You could pick, you could pick it as usually a other language related stuff I just use happiness because it's already a concept that exists. Right. It's not a name, it's an idea. So that I think that that would be up to the, the individual. Okay. You could okay. either, yeah. I mean, if you went to a calligrapher and said, I, I want you to write my name, right? You could either go, I, I think that they would probably have concepts like, well, do you want it to look like an eagle or, yeah. or whatever? And then they would work within that. So if, it, they want, if you wanted it, the concept of joy, they could probably modify the glyph for joy or happiness mm -hmm. into a shape that you liked. So the shorthand that Jeff Yasna has Shalon practice, is that the one that looks like the uh, heartbeat rhythm? Yeah, probably. That, that, that was probably a lethe women's script. So like in, in, in the back, is that, there's multiple THs in that list. Yeah. Right, so like, there's really nothing that's about our tool actually trumps the letter of the, right. the letter of the letters, the law of the number of letters. There, there's probably a, a much more simplified version of that that people um, in, daily life in daily life would use. I mean, you've seen some of that with the the glyphs for the heralds um, in the in the books. They're, there's when they're really small, they're way more simplified, but there's still the shape is there. I mean, Thath would probably, in in daily life, would probably look more like. So Branderson's rule of writing of the rule of awesome is number one applies to Alethi glyph writing. Yes, it does. The rule of awesome is everything. You know, it would it would probably. They would probably write justice much more simply. I found more sharpened pencil. Does anybody else need one? Like, like that. <laughs> you'll, you'll notice down on, on, free, on Cherech, wait. You probably have freedom. I have like all the Alethi names on here too. So down on the the, the tattoos that they put on the bridge bridge four head, um, Cherech, which is freedom. They've distended that, but it looks like it looks like wings of some kind of animal, a chicken. It looks like the wings of a chicken. Um, the chicken again. But I mean, there. 
e even though it's on Roshar, we still have to make everything appeal yeah. to the senses of, of our culture as well. So if it look yeah, if it looks like freedom to us, then there is an eye. There is an eye, but like that's weird. So guard in Alethi is takas. Wow, are we, has it really gone that far? <laughs> Time wise. What's that? So you know the sense of the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog? Uh huh, yeah. <laughs> just, just real quick, yeah. <laughs> there, there's a glyph for that, right? There, there probably is in the calligraphers guild. Maybe there's a glyph that they have people draw over and over. I haven't thought about that, but I, I, I imagine they, they, there is um, junior calligraphers or something. They, they sit and it's like, now draw the this phoneme, and you, they would probably pra have people practice it, drawing it and distending it and changing it in all different ways um, until that. You know, all the rotations and things are just ingrained in their head. So how long did Nash have to spend in the calligraphers guild? Longer than he would like. <laughs> he does say he prefers uh, dying from wounds than hand cramps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, staying on the topic of, of Nash. Yeah. Who, who wrote the text on, on that page? This on this page? page? Was, that, was that you or Brent? This was Nash. Well, it was me. <laughs> you, usually, it, usually, if there's anything written by Naz, it, I wrote it. It so, always goes through Peter, and it goes through Brandon. Um, was there was there part of you that was thinking of the fandom as a whole when you wrote the secrets and covered infiltrating the calligraphers guild are more mundane than expected? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Probably. <laughs> I like that little bit at the end. Oh, and see the next page for the, the other script turn the page our next chapter starts. Yeah. yeah. We'll get page two in another book. Do you have, have two O's written here? You know, one's the square with the one corner open. Mm -hmm. The other one is supposed to be kind of like a diamond shape. I mean, it's just kind of it's a little well, long, so I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to be written. It, it, let, me, let me just show you what you can do with the O there. It's just not kind of yeah. So some of these have diff a couple of different shapes that can be used. Um, it's like the O. The O can be obviously my, you know, it's kind of this incomplete box. But it, but it could be written like this. You could even, if you, if you needed it to, it's, it's too bad I didn't do an O in the word for doctor because then I could do that sort of a thing, and it would still work as an O. The, the reason the other one's in there is to show you that as long as it's an almost complete thing, you can curve the lines. You could even do, I mean, you can do crazy things. It's, it's just taking that shape and distending it however you want. You have to remember, they don't read these. They recognize glyphs after they, they've already been done and released into into the society, so things are recognized rather than read. Right. Um, uh, um, it's it's kind of similar to that in in Chinese, and I don't I don't know a lot about Chinese, but in Chinese, I think like the the the, the word for person used to be like that or something, or you know, it looked more like a person. I'm completely. Messing this up. This is the, don't. That's the number six. That's the number six. Anyway, so I accidentally wrote a Chinese word. Uh, 
or may maybe it was tree. You know, tree is something like this, and then this is forest or something like that. But, but ori originally, some of the some of the Chinese symbols were a lot more like that, and now it, you know, it looks like that. I probably wrote a really bad word or something. <laughs> so is that one his shash brand and asterisks, or is it? Oh, his shash brand? Yeah. Because I know it's the number. Is it shash brand and asterisks, or is it a, like it has the number, shash? Oh, no. Th that, or is it a cooler brand? I just wonder. No, his, his is right here. His, okay, his well brand way, looks like that's that. Way cooler than this one. Yeah, no, it's not the number six. Um, okay. They're just just like in English where I, we have two, 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 and two, right? This, these are two different shashes. Okay. Yeah. Because I didn't envision it. But shash is, uh, number six is the most dangerous letter. Can you talk about uh, the colon and tanat glyphs that are on the, the, the bridge board that do? Um, it's kind of interesting how those are kind of sort of symmetrical together? That's always been kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is, when they went to the, they had a, you know, the tattoo artist create this glyph to cover up the scars on their foreheads. Um, they all have slightly different scars and, and different things. And, and, and Kaladin had this, this big, so I had to create the Sasnan Shash before I created the tattoo, so I would know how much do I have to cover up, right? If they're going to put tattoos on their foreheads over their scars, how much do I have to cover up? And this is one of those things where a calligrapher is going to say, I have to cover this up, so how do I change the, the shapes to, to do that? So there's thicker lines going on with that. But, so that's what was happening here. They wanted to keep it, I wanted to keep it they, me wanted to keep it symmetrical, um, but the shapes of the, the letters and things weren't quite going to allow that. So that's why it's almost symmetrical. Um, that goes a little bit against the things should be recognized rather than, rather than red, um, but that was something that I found out in between book two and book three, where I'm just like, these need to be recognized rather than read, and also with discussions with Brandon. So if I were to do that now, they would probably be exactly symmetrical. But in this case, they're not quite exactly symmetrical, which is kind of cool. It's like kind of like writing a word frontward and backward and, and rotating it, and it still says the same thing. Whatever, there's a name for that. Ampagrams. Yeah, yeah. But uh, th those are really distended because we've seen other colon glyphs that don't look like that at all. But it had, you know, they, in this case, they were more trying to make that whole tattoo symmetrical. Whereas when they're branding the foreheads, I mean, in a way, it's it's kind of poetic because when they brand the foreheads, they're not worried about symmetrical. They're they're treating the people as if they are don't matter anymore. Um, and and here they they've gone to more of a symmetrical glyph again. It's kind of a it's kind of poetic in that they're res they're being restored to um, in in some ways humanity. Any other questions? Is there anything that you want to know that you're like, boy, this guy's just dry and boring? Not dry and boring. Is there any connection to this writing style in any of the any of the other cosmic worlds? Um. Yes. Yeah. Like the, like the, the Elantrian symbols? No, there's no connection to Elantris. Um, I would, if I were you, take a, take a look at the, uh, take a look at the writing around the Oathgate maps. The, the Oathgate map. It's hard to, it's hard to see, but take a look at that. Um, Wait a minute, it is. Don Chan was, on the was written by not humans, so you just, dis you just. Hmm? I thought Don Chan was. You kind of predicted that. Okay, what, what was that that you said? Don Chan was not written by humans. Right. What am I calling it? I, I might be using the wrong, the wrong word. No, Don Chan. Mm -hmm. 
this might be a, this might be a thing where I have not read the final version of the book. <laughs> <laughs> I take I take copious notes when I read the first time I read it, but I'm reading this book that's like this big. Then I have to go off and make maps yeah. and things, right? Um, and then Brandon and Peter go and change the book behind my back, <laughs> which Guys. happened with Mistborn. Has everybody read Mistborn here? Yeah. Okay. Well, at the very end, something happens, right? <laughs> where, where Ben like the way that she defeats the Lord Ruler, or tries to defeat the Lord Ruler, maybe for those of you who may not have read it, um, completely changed from the version I did. So somebody was talking to me and was like, "Wasn't it cool when Vin did this?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about? That's not how she did this. That happens all the time still." So i we can t you can. Um, I'll get clarification from you, Dina, after this, because okay. I might I might be in the, the wrong. I mean, it says it right here that this is the scripts are likely descended from Don Chant. Yes, that is true. I do not know if we have seen Don Chant in the books yet, but we've seen things that are close to it. But they did in the book. They cracked the code. Mm -hmm. But yes. Yeah, they cracked the code in the book. The uh, yeah. <laughs> but where does Don Chant come from? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to wait. I'm gonna have to wait on that because I might be completely wrong on what I'm thinking. I, I think I know where it comes from, but uh, I could be completely wrong. That, that's one of those things where that you're gonna put this out on the internet and then I'm gonna get fired. I won't get. Well, I mean, you, you say don't put it there. Just say it wasn't me. <laughs> Distort the voice. <laughs> we are, we are. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. To, I'm just kind of, yeah. Do the Salem writes with these kinds of books? Do the Salem as a merchant class write with these kinds of books? Because merchant people have a different kind of alphabet. So you could take this this alphabet right here. If you know this, you could probably go and at least figure out what Thalens are writing. But they, they write it in a different way. Like, you know, they, they, would, they, they write it, whoops. They, they write things like this. Mm. Without the symmetry? Yeah, they, they're not concerned as much about symmetry in their writing. Oh, I don't know. Just, just it's my it's my full time job. So I'll sit and write these till I'm comfortable with them. So does uh, anybody want help on their glyphs on what they're doing, or want me to t look at it? Please. I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm interested in what you guys are doing. This is cool. Cool. I really, I, well, so I wrote out the shapes and uh -huh. that, that was the one that I thought I could work with.